I have heard it said that race is identity politics. I disagree. That is what it has become. I will concede the point that identity politics has used the system of race as an archetype for its own interests. As a matter of fact, what race is exactly is surrounded in quite a bit of subjectivity and thus a lot of confusion. More especially for black males, ignorance on the subject will leave you open to a variety of misguided and dead-end endeavors. Specifically, where people attempt to mix race with spirituality or metaphysics. I want to take this conversation beyond opinion. I'll explain the things I've said and the things I will say, but first I'm gonna ask this question. What is race? In this day and age, if you were to ask the common man or woman what race or racism is, the answer is quite predictable. They would say something to the effect of, race is the color of your skin. Maybe that it's a social construct, or maybe even relate race to your biological ethnicity. And in the extreme cases, make a claim towards something metaphysical, and then start talking about nine ether such and such. On top of that, they would describe racism as something someone does. Maybe an unfair treatment of certain people based on that skin color or calling someone out of their name in a manner that that person doesn't appreciate. They might even say that it's a social construct and doesn't exist to begin with. I won't outright say that none of these are correct at all, nor will I suggest that any of them are true. Rather, I will say that the truth of the matter is going to be found within the details of these claims and the word racism itself. Right off the bat, let's challenge a few of these ideas. As much as skin color is used as a catalyst and scapegoat for prejudice and bigotry, race is not skin color. I'll start here by reflecting on a conversation that I had while working a job some years ago. I was speaking to a coworker Red hair, fair skin. Now I, being the little niglet that I was, called him white. He looked at me very sternly and said, I'm not white, I'm Jewish. I was stunned by this assertion and I was about to challenge the notion when the gravity of what he said clicked for me. More towards the central point of the conversation I'm going to continue. Racism is an ism, like feminism. It's not something you do, it's a system of thinking. The same way you wouldn't say that that person did something feminist or that person did something capitalist. To say that someone has done something racist is to say that you clearly do not comprehend the nature of an ism. The idea of race as a system of thought will make more sense as I go along here, but for now I will point this out. Not only do most people misunderstand this concept, but the information surrounding this topic is not coincidentally confusing. In an effort to bring the points that I'd like to challenge and to make into clear view, I'm going to answer this question. Where does race come from? Also, spoiler alert, it's not ancient or spiritual. The idea that the concept of black people comes from ancient Egypt once called Kemet, which translates to the black land, is not a correlation to race or some ancient or spiritual reflection of such. In ancient Egypt, there was a red land and a black land. The red land was the realm of the foreigners, their gods and the wilderness itself. It existed alongside the black land, which was the fertile Nile Valley settlement known as Egypt. So, that isn't where race comes from. It's not an ancient or spiritual concept. That still does not answer the question of where race comes from. But stick with me, because I'm going to bring this full circle. The question remains, where does race come from? Said differently, where did race start? Race as a concept, more especially as a concept to describe groups of people, was created right here in the Americas and it's as American as apple pie. In fact, prior to 1681, 
As a matter of law or otherwise, there was no such thing as a group of people called white or any other race for that matter. The first place race shows up in history, more especially to denote a group of people, is in 1664, within what was either the first of or the precursor to what are known as anti-miscegenation laws. Commonly, these laws are thought to have outlawed interracial marriage, although, as I usually say, the devil is in the details. To be more exact, these laws in 1664 first prohibited, quote, British and other freeborn women from marrying enslaved Negro men. Note that white hasn't yet shown up, nor has black for that matter. Nonetheless, these laws were enforced against such marriages and in some instances were encouraged by slaveholders. The reason for that is because the punishment for these women would be that they too would become slaves for the duration of their husband's life and any children that they had would be slaves as well into their 20s at least. As I said before, the actual creation of whiteness didn't come around until 1681 in a new rendition of the laws that I just spoke about. With a change in its language to prohibit, quote, British and other white women from marrying Negro slaves. Once again, take note, black does not yet exist. But not only is white now present, but the first subjects of racism were white women. I don't know about you, but that's kind of hilarious to me. So stay on track. Now, what is it that's happened between 1664 and 1681 that necessitated the change in these laws to create white and white people? The answer to that question is the year-long rebellion known as Bacon's Rebellion in 1676. For the next 100 years after the first instance of the creation of white, and by virtue of that whiteness, the benefits of such were animated by not only those people now deemed as white, but by the state itself, no less. Through a series of various laws that made white matter, and sought to substantiate the subjugation of anyone who was not to be considered white. All this prior to and leading up to the constituting of the United States of America. White was the first race created. There is no race without its creation. Said differently, no other concept of a race of people would exist without white having first been instantiated. This is why racism is white supremacy. That isn't a moral claim. It's a claim based on what racism is. This goes back to why people say that only white people can be racists. And yes, I will most certainly concede the point that other groups of people can be both bigoted and prejudiced. That, however, isn't racism. And to make such a conflation is inaccurate. And as an effect of that is part of the reason why there is so much confusion around what race is and the role that whiteness plays in that system. My point here in all this is not to say that race does not matter or even to suggest that race does not exist. Race is very real. My point is that race is not skin color. Race is not biological and race is not some ancient or spiritual concept. So then, what is racism? Point blank and period, racism is white supremacy. To be even more specific and exact as I can, race is a caste system. The evolution of white supremacy from its early roots has obscured its present expression in a variety of ways. The main takeaway here is that every race is a subcategory of white, period. If racism is anyone's problem, it is white people's problem. The problem other races of people have is continuing to agree to this caste system for lack of knowledge of what else to do. I plan to save that discussion for another segment altogether. All that being said, will I abandon the role and character of a black man? No. Why? Because the characterization is still quite pertinent in our present social climate. 
Although the issue of blackness is not the hill that I want to die on, I won't be throwing the baby out with the bathwater and dropping all connections to the idea of being a black male. What I will do is focus my attention beyond the bounds of this hurdle and seek to learn the details of what this idea does and can offer to me in describing and framing the reality that I live on this planet with as much nuance as I can maintain without dissolving the details of my own conceptions. Being black cannot define who or what I am essentially. And you don't even have to take it to a level of analysis of spirituality. The state of Georgia does not exist in a manner to where I can go outside and find some line on the ground. Its existence, however, does hold some weight in its own right. The same can be said for race and being a black male. That cannot be ignored. As always, the devil is most certainly in the details.